first of all, one of the challenges was we needed uh, teacher buy-in. I think with any new initiative, um, from a principal standpoint, you may have a, a good idea, you may have something that you've researched, you may have something that you believe strongly in, but unless your team believes in that system or that initiative as strongly as you do, it's likely not going to be successful. And there are example after example of those types of leadership mistakes that we can all make. They knew what the goal was to create a system within the school day. They knew how students would benefit. And they also knew they had to, to learn or understand that this was not going to create more work or just another thing for them. It actually was going to make their life simpler once the system was up and running effectively. So one of the huge challenges was to get everybody or as many people as possible um, believing and aligning um, um, with that system. And I also think because teachers helped create the model, when we did have struggles, uh, it was easier to overcome that, whether it be struggles with technology or struggles with working in geographical teams rather than their own students. Um, we kind of survived those bumps because there was teacher investment, but it was a huge challenge. And I think what, as we've gone throughout New England and made presentations to other teachers, what we have said is we have good news. We've done a lot of that grunt work for you. We've, we've had those struggles, those ups and downs. We've learned what wasn't effective and what was. And that doesn't mean that teachers and staffs are not going to need to understand response to intervention. It doesn't mean that they're not going to have their own uh, flavor uh, to the model. But it does mean that some of those really hard decisions and hard discussions and, and the technology piece of it has been solved. Um, so we feel like this is, a, this is a really good time to jump on board. And that would, that would be my answer to the biggest challenge. Well, throughout tasks existence, I know the biggest part at the beginning was that we went from advisory where you didn't really do a lot to knowing that you can go and find help. And the biggest part was admitting that you needed help mm. because we really thought like, oh, well, it's here, but we don't need to use it. And now what's continually good and continually a challenge is the fact that it's on you most of the time. You're responsible for making sure you're booked to the right place. And utilizing that wisely is probably the best and most challenging thing about TASK. So I'd like to follow up on that for just a moment. Do you feel then, as a student, you learned, or you were encouraged to learn more personal responsibility? Definitely, because your homeroom teacher, unless a teacher books you for, say, help that they know you need and that you've agreed to, you have to be responsible for where you are for the week and you can get help and that's what it's there for. So it's your choice and that's why I think a lot of people like TASK because it gives you a sense of more responsibility for your own learning. I think uh, for Ariana, um, she typically has her choice on Mondays as to where she's going to book. But there are some students that for whatever reason, whether it be maybe they've been absent from school for five days because they've been sick, or maybe they are really struggling in a math course and, and they failed a quiz. Um, the nice thing about this model is that yes, it's student directed and students do take responsibility, as Ariana said, but there's also that directed piece, that directed piece where staff um, who want to address a student that's not motivated or a, a student that's falling behind or a student that's purposefully not doing homework, they can address it in a different way and they can direct the student to those interventions, um, which gives incentive to the students to not want to be in that situation. For Ariana, she wants to keep control of her schedule and where she wants those supports and where she wants those extensions, so she keeps up and she, she does what she needs to do because she knows that piece of, whoops, um, you know, there's that other side if, if by chance I fall on her. Mm -hmm. 
So I think one of the things that you can see from what everybody so far has said is that this is a, in, in, in a very complex creation. Uh, I've always liked it, you know, or likened it in, in my mind to a Rubik's Cube. We had so many different ideas, and any change that we made really changed the entire landscape of task. So there were people who really wanted it to be teacher-driven only, no choice for the student, and that was you know, part of our early discussions in the library. And other people said, no, that really shouldn't, it should be student-centered. We have to teach students responsibility. So right there, there was a shift in the rubrics cube that completely changed you know, the way that we went about it. And having reached now a situation where it is an amalgam of all of these different ideas, it's really the best solution for our school at this time. So the fact that it sounds very complex has to do with the fact that a lot of different ideas had to be brought together on the one common denominator, and we really solved the puzzle that way. So the challenge really was accommodating everybody's ideas, making sure that every side was heard, getting student input, getting parent input, getting faculty input, and making sure that all of these in the end came together in a manner that made sense for everybody. So the complexity of task as it exists today is really a testament to its strength, which is to have incorporated through that process of overcoming the challenges everybody's voice that is now part of the task system. There were lots of logistical challenges, but I, I would look at um, how do we win the students over? You know, whenever you do anything in a high school, um, if you don't have the students in the equation of, you know, giving their input and having um, uh, you know, some vested interest in having this thing work. That's going to immediately go home to the parents. And then the parents don't support the initiative. And then the parents start to talk to the school board. And now the school board's at, and that, you end up, you know, running around and trying to put out fires all the time. So the fact that Ariana is here, the fact that this was a concept that, uh, that, that, that included Every kid, you know, the capable kids, you know, it had, there was something for everybody in this that was positive for them. Move the entire, you know, the, the herd west, you know, and and uh, and that was really, really that. To be honest, that was our goal in the first year. Let's get this thing up and running. Let's let's let it bubble a little bit, and let's hopefully have a positive outcome that students will go home and tell their their parents about. Because we knew that if we had the platform, you know, we could improve upon the platform. But if the platform failed, we weren't going to be able to do anything else with it. Um, so that, that was a, a, a huge, uh, and I, I didn't even, you know, I had an inkling that that was something that we needed to focus on. But I, I, you know, I never fully recognized the power of that until the spring when we did the surveys and we, and we saw how much kids were really into this. Um, and everything was talked through. Uh, and, you know, it's not perfect by any means, but it but it's it's clearly uh, you know leaps and bounds uh, you know well well beyond what um, what we were doing before. If originally the intent was for extra help, one of the most recent surveys that we took, which was in April, actually showed that almost ten percent of the students have moved themselves away from a you know, weakness intervention model towards using the time for doing more research. And to me that shows a maturity of the model whereby, again student driven, there's a transition from this is only for help to actually this allows me to do extra work or more work, more quality work. And 10% is significant to me. Um, I don't think it's a statistical aberration, but it shows that students themselves create the purpose for task that we might not even be in control of. And it's a very purposeful uh, effort that they you know, undertake. And so it's, it's really important to remember that students were not part only at the beginning, but also by what they're doing, they're showing that they have fully bought into the task model. And so the model is able to support that is able to support transitioning from 
I'm here for help to I'm here to be enriched. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, it empowers teachers to be able to give research assignments or homework because they know that there's a time during the day when they can get kids can get assistance with that. Whereas in some instances, 50% of the class might not do it because they were left to their own devices at home to do it. Okay. So now, you know, you have a way to follow up on it. Yeah. I think, too, uh, Ariana mentioned students helping students mm -hmm. earlier. I think another component to this which is evolving is juniors and seniors specifically, although not just juniors and seniors, um, are looking for that community service component to their transcripts. Um, actually have an interest in education themselves beyond high school, beyond college. And we've started to tap into the peer tutoring. So when we think of a professional learning community, we sometimes just think of the teaching staff learning from one another. But what we started to learn this year as TASC begins to evolve is that students learning from students is just as valuable. It builds self-confidence and self-esteem. Um, and uh, it helps both the teacher or the peer tutor uh, as well as the student.